I'm transforming the entirety of Minecraft within a giant multi-biome island to create the ultimate survival world. We're tackling every major biome and structure and are even upgrading key gameplay elements, giving you story, quests, treasure hunts and tons of secrets to uncover along the way. So far, we've transformed these biomes and we're left with the oceans, tiger, snowy mountains and of course, the nether and end dimensions to tackle. We're well on target for releasing the map this summer on the Patreon, so fasten your seatbelts and let's get started stuck into today's video. So, as you guys know, Minecraft's vanilla oceans contain some key features. So we're going to tackle as many as possible in this transformation, giving each aspect a much needed glow up and of course adding some epic new additions too. Firstly, we've got to upgrade the ocean environment, making big changes to the terrain with plenty of caves and underwater arches to swim through. I'll also be adding vibrant coral reefs, plenty of seaweed and a variety of giant shells, which will be the perfect place for some hidden loot. We'll also be including the ocean's key structures with a shipwreck graveyard full of secrets, some deserted ruins destroyed in a bygone conflict, and of course, the mysterious ocean monument with the most interesting story of them all. And finally, I had to give a nod to some of Minecraft's ocean mobs, so we're going to be including a giant glow squid, although this might not turn out like you're expecting. We'll also be teasing some of the ocean's backstory with a new home and deeper purpose for the guardians, as well as adding a dark origin story to the drowned, which will actually spawn more frequently near the monument. And that's a lot to get on with, so we better get building. But before we dive into the oceans, please remember to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on this project. Right now, only 24% of you are currently subscribed. This channel is the first place that you're going to hear about the world download once it's complete. Plus, it will be on the Trixie Blocks and Steph Blocks channels where you'll see the first ever gameplay in the map, including some 100 days content. And while you're down there, let's get this video to 200k likes. Otherwise, I'll just have to delete the world and it will never see the light of day. <laughs> also, be sure to check out the USW's backstory on the Steph Blocks channel, plus her latest release where we take on a nail-biting challenge in one of my craziest Minecraft builds. And we've even released a download of the game mode featured in our video, which you can get right now on our Patreon. This is Minecraft, but the lava rises every eight seconds. We're trapped in this giant cave containing this spooky zombie-infested stronghold city, and there's only one way out. But it's all the way at the top of this massive tower. You don't want to miss this one guys, so be sure to check it out after this video. Right, now to tackle this empty ocean. First, I'll be draining the water and terraforming, taking advantage of 1.18's new world height. Then we're going to be laying down the foundations for our vibrant coral reef, filling the upgraded environment with giant shells, a wide variety of coral and plenty of seaweed. We're also going to be including some shipwrecks scattered around the ocean's floor, as well as the giant glowing perpetrator of this shipwreck massacre, being sure to keep things survival friendly. So, to get started on this blank canvas, we're draining the water from the area and creating lots and lots of space to work with. I then began with the terraforming, using sand to create a natural looking landscape where I'd cut away at the original ocean floor using world edit. I also created a long gradual slope to the ocean floor, leading away from the USW and towards the natural oceans, since this transformation is situated in that horseshoe shaped bay of the island. And with the main base shape laid down, I converted the sand back to stone and began working on some super exaggerated fantasy style arches to line this enormous area we're working with and later frame our ocean monument really nicely with a coral reef. I of course had to add some caves and overhangs for exploration too, making the base landscape as dynamic a canvas as possible for placing plenty of decorations and secrets later. And to finish up the base landscape, I added some more gnarly rocks varying in shape and size to act as the main foundations for our coral later on, trying my best to create as many interesting areas as possible before painting the entire environment with a natural gradient, leaving the sand in place where it would naturally fall. Anyway, to fill our empty canvas with some vibrant colours, it's time for the coral. Now I already made some large coral from my underwater kingdom project that I was really happy with, so I decided to use some of it for this project too. But to make sure that this massive reef had plenty of variation, I also built some new coral types. That way we can place a wide range of sizes, colours and shapes around the huge landscape. In a similar way, I also nabbed some of the shells from our Underwater Kingdom project, making some tweaks to the colours so that they were a little more natural and also adding some new shell variants as well. Steph and I then took on the challenge of placing all of these shells around the vast landscape, some hidden in caves, others sitting in the sand on the ocean floor. You can already see that this place is packed with some super dynamic terrain and tucked away areas to explore. And of course, plenty of nooks and crannies where I can hide secrets for you guys to discover. <laughs> It's already starting to look like it's teeming with life and we're just getting started. 
Speaking of liveliness, as promised, we're incorporating a giant glow squid based on the tentacles I built from the enormous kraken I created in my underwater kingdom project. I know you guys must be wondering how the hell a giant glow squid fits into all of this. <laughs> and I'm not surprised. Without spoiling too much of the story, the glow squid was sent by the witch coven of the Mushroom Swamp Island to retrieve a powerful enchanted artifact, which they'd misplaced when they first fled from the main island. This artifact is actually the key to this entire transformation, causing this insane environment to blossom and explaining why it's limited to this particular radius. The coven sent the giant glow squid to retrieve the artifact, but it had already fallen into other hands, who weren't willing to give it up. They used the power of the artifact to defeat the witch's glow squid, binding it to the very island from which it was sent. Two of its giant tentacles remain exposed, lashing around in its attempts to escape, bringing down any unfortunate ships that sail too close to the witch's island. I wonder if the strange artifact that everyone wants to get their hands on has something to do with the ocean monument and those who built it. And what happens to the lost souls of the ship's crews? I suppose we'll just have to find out later in the video, although I reckon those shipwrecks are packed full of secrets for you to uncover yourselves. And anyway, moving on from that little tidbit of lore, let's finish up this environment and place the coral and seaweed. There's a hell of a lot of ground to cover here. As you can see, placing this coral completely transforms the entire ocean floor, creating a magical coral reef packed full of opportunities for adventure. There is literally coral spanning as far as the eye can see. The more you look, the more details you see, and the more that you want to explore this place. Honestly, this place is pretty insane. I can't believe how intricate this reef turned out and how cool the shipwreck graveyard looks. As you can imagine, we've hidden ridiculous amounts to find in this crazy jungle of coral. There's virtually an endless supply of caves, archways, shells, coral, and sunken ships to lose yourself in. And it's gonna be a real challenge. So definitely get your night vision and water breathing potions at the ready. <laughs> So, with the environment complete, it's time to move on to the largest structure in this transformation, the Ocean Monument. Now I'm going to do my best to create something that's really authentic to the Vanilla Ocean Monument, focusing on some key elements of the original building. For the basic structure, we're going to be including lots of pillars, sloping rooftops and ornate details inspired by those notches lining the Vanilla Monument's rooftops. We'll also be repurposing those strange six archways at the back of the original monument, and instead making room for the fabled six shells of the sea, which tie into the story of our USW oceans. To make the front wall and entrance pop a little bit more, we'll be adding an organic God of the Seas statue head and replacing the original archways with trident wielding Murgard statues. And finally, we'll be including that powerful artifact we mentioned earlier, which brought this whole environment to life, a gigantic enchanted heart of the sea. Now initially, I wasn't sure exactly what to start with for this build, but I quickly realised that that God of the Sea statue head entrance we planned would really help me work out the scale this thing needed to be. So, taking inspiration from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, I moulded this Poseidon-esque head from Prismarine, with its mouth open, ready to swallow up those of you who'd be crazy enough to venture into this monument. But why does the entrance depict the God of the Seas? Well, that all ties into that powerful artifact that I mentioned earlier, lost by the fleeing witches many, many centuries ago. The mysterious artifact, which was an enchanted heart of the sea, was accidentally dropped into the ocean, swept out with the tide, forming a powerful conduit in the USW seas. For years, the conduit sat alone on the ocean floor, absorbing the ocean's power and gradually growing in size, transforming the surrounding landscape until eventually it was discovered by adventurers from a distant land. They were pirates, travelling to the USW in search for the lost treasure of the evil pharaoh. But they ventured too close to the witch's mushroom swamp island and were struck by a devastating spell. Their ship washed up on the shores of the desert without its crew, with the first clue to the treasure hunt left inside. The crew were seemingly lost to the treacherous waters until they discovered the heart of the sea. To their surprise, once they neared its glowing light, they could somehow breathe underwater and gained other powers too. It had saved them from a grisly fate and actually gave rise to a new race of people thanks to the powers of the heart of the sea. And so they believed that the god of the seas had plucked the heart from one of the witch's pockets, placing it on the ocean floor in its rightful place. The Mer people worshipped the god of the seas as their saviour, and of course included a depiction of him in their monument. Anyway, while explaining some of that crazy backstory, we now have a blocked out monument structure heavily based on the original vanilla version. A grand god of the seas statue head entrance, and some small trident bearing guards that I've put to the side for now. We'll come back to those right at the end of the monument's exterior transformation. 
With the main structure laid out, it's time for the fun part. Lots and lots of detail. Even though the Vanilla Ocean Monument is a bit of a strange looking structure, it's actually arguably one of the most detailed structures in the game. So I had to do it justice. Starting with the bottom layer, I designed the main supporting pillars and added some intricate archways incorporating plenty of sea lanterns to keep these details nice and visible later on. I then moved on to the next layer, detailing the smaller pillars and adding a wavy design under the slopes of the roof. This part is actually called the pediment in classical architecture. And before we move on to the next layer, I decided to tweak our God of the Sea's head to match the materials more coherently with the rest of the monument and add sea lanterns into his eyes to make them pop. Next up, mimicking the other small pillar designs, I started detailing the next layer, and you can see things are really starting to take shape nicely now. Continuing with these ornate details, I created a design to line the bottom walls. Even though they're pretty hidden for the most part, I wanted to pay attention to every detail here and make this as immersive as possible for you guys. And so, to finish up the detailing of the main structure, I got to work on the top level, also adding a small platform at the back where something special will sit later on. At the top of the monument, I added a staircase to the top platform, which I think fits really nicely with the roof. I then finished up the front pediment with one last pattern, before moving on to tackle the top platform, which actually plays host to that fabled artifact I mentioned earlier, the Enchanted Heart of the Sea. After serving as salvation for the lost souls of the stranded pirate crews, the heart was positioned in pride of place on top of the monument, allowing its powers to reach far across the ocean, transforming the surroundings and its inhabitants into something magical. As well as the heart of the sea being key to the pirate's survival and the emergence of the Mer people, there were six large shells scattered near one another, which the stranded pirates used for shelter before they were able to build their own infrastructure. They later became known as the Six Shells of the Sea. Without their protection, the ocean may have never have seen the emergence of an entire new race of people. And so, once they were strong enough, the founding crews of the Mer people led the inhabitants of the ocean and instructed that a monument was to be built and housed the heart of the sea to protect them and what was left of their treasures from harm, with the six shells of the sea placed atop the roofs for the founding crews to reside in. With the six shells now all cosy in their new homes, it was time to make the final adjustments to the exterior of this monument, creating a more natural sandbank towards the entrance of the monument, and finally returning to those statues that we set aside earlier. Now, as you can see, I originally built these statues with legs, but that doesn't entirely fit with the story. Over centuries, the first lost pirates were joined by many more lost souls, cursed by the witches or caught out by the tentacles of the giant glow squid. The community quickly advanced, with rapid evolution occurring thanks to the magical heart conduit. The Mer people became their own race, their bodies completely adapting to their environment, which explains this Mer guard that I've just whipped up to guard the main entrance. However, in recognition of their earlier, pre-evolution advancements, they also built these seahorse guards. They were the original military force of the Mer people. It was essentially their underwater cavalry. They protected the people from harm's way for centuries before their rapid evolution equipped them more appropriately to protect themselves. And so, they also sit in front of the monument, their reputation as fierce warriors providing a warning to attackers and treasure hunters. It looks like the exterior of our monument is complete, and it's really looking like an epic centerpiece. The resemblance to the vanilla monument is pretty uncanny as well. Maybe I didn't get too carried away this time. <laughs> And now it's time to crack on with the inside of this monument. We're gonna make this a real challenge for you guys to explore. There'll be a corridor maze starting at the main entrance to test your wits from the outset. Then each of the four levels will contain a complex network of rooms, including loot rooms, treasure rooms, and sponge rooms too. We'll be adding chambers in each wing for the guardians with a grand chamber on the top floor for the elder guardian. The main entrance was designed to lure in enemies and thieves, where they would enter a maze of corridors followed by a labyrinth of rooms, eventually losing themselves in the complexity of the structure or stumbling across one of the guardians of the ocean. So I plotted out a grid on each floor, making lots of edits to complicate things. And you've also got to remember that inside an ocean monument, the exits and entrances to each room can come from any angle. So this is going to be pretty confusing to explore on this scale. I wanted to keep things relatively simple and authentic to the vanilla structure, but added plenty of details to the corridors and rooms, with the entrances and exits varying every time, and of course scattering in some of those special room types as well. So keep your eyes peeled for loot and sponge. To be honest, working out where all the special rooms are might just about be the only way to work your way around this crazy maze. That, and a whole lot of potions and doors. Depends on your playstyle, I guess. <laughs> 
and on this floor we're adding the guardian chambers in the wings those parts of the monument that jut out at the front. I thought it'd be cool to incorporate a few elements into this guardian chamber, so I added in some large central pillars, as well as a couple of treasure chamber elements. Since the Mer people captured the guardians to protect their treasure, it seemed fitting to add some treasure in this room. And if you manage to outsmart these guardians, then you'll be rewarded with some loot. And to finish things up, I planned out the fourth and final floor before adding in all of the walls and secret rooms and moving on to the Grand Elder Guardian Chamber, which I just had to turn into the ultimate underwater boss battle room. I added in some giant pillars, a large floor pattern and a platform, with of course a little stash of loot to reward you if you made it this far. Props to you if you managed to get through all of this in survival. I'm super happy with how this interior turned out and I can't wait to play it with Steph. Even though I built it, there's no way I'll remember how to get through all of these floors. And that's without even dealing with the Guardians. Finally, to finish things off, it's time to add those ocean ruins. Now, in vanilla Minecraft, we have the stone and sand variants of these ruins. So I'll be including a little transformation for each. There'll be pillars, archways, and various damaged buildings, keeping things relatively simple to imitate the vanilla structures, but also generally matching the style of the ocean monument so that the whole transformation ties together as one cohesive piece. So to kick things off, I started building in stone, creating a variety of modular archways and buildings that I could paste around easily and add more damage to once in place. This way, I would be able to slot in the ruins into the existing environment pretty easily. I created a sand variant of the same modular buildings and structures before finding a nice spot to place things down. These stone and sand settlements actually emerged as the Mer People societies blossomed, building their own villages and establishing their own beliefs and ways of life. Eventually, they fell into conflict, destroying each other's settlements and leaving behind only the founding crews. Poisoned by the conflict, having taken sides and lost all faith in the heart of the sea, something extraordinary happened to the remaining Mer people. The heart's enchantments appear to turn on the Mer people, seemingly weary of all the conflict. It cursed the remaining Mer people to an empty, barren life. They became known as the Drowned, lost souls aimlessly wandering the waters for eternity, attacking any who crossed their path. The monument and the heart remained dormant, although it's said that a glimmer of power remains and that the Guardians still inhabit the monument, protecting the treasures hidden deep within the maze. These ruins were highly requested by you guys, and I think they're one of the coolest spots to explore in this entire ocean. So, which side are you on? Stone or sand? And so, with these mysterious ruins placed and the transformation largely complete, it was time to add the final pieces of seaweed throughout the environment, fill the entire area with water again, which was super satisfying, and create some magma bubble columns to add that final challenge when it comes to exploring this vast ocean's landscape. And our ocean transformation is finally complete, so let's take a proper look at everything that we just created. And that just about wraps up our Oceans transformation. Let me know down in the comments your favorite part and what you'd like to see in the remaining biomes. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that 200k like goal while you're down there. And make sure you check out the Steph Blocks video. Remember you can get the Lava Rising game mode on our Patreon, which also gives you access to every single build I've completed. So definitely make sure you go check it out if you want something fun to play while you're waiting for the USW to release. And with that said, that's it for me today. If you're looking for exclusive updates in the meantime, then go follow my Instagram and make sure you join the Discord. Discord. Thanks once again for all the support on this project, and I really can't wait to release this map in the summer. But in the meantime, let's keep that USW hype up. <laughs> Bye guys.